Guys, check it out. Another homemade uh, CB antenna, base station antenna. This time I did a delta loop. Yeah, I finally have something on the fold over test pole that I put up oh, four or five months ago now. I decided to put this antenna together. I was doing some antenna research and I stumbled on this one and I realized I had everything I needed in order to build this one. So guess what happened? <laughs> All right, let me lay this thing down because it's easy to just drop this thing and uh, I'll show you the antenna and show you what I use to build it and I'll give you all the exact dimensions all right let's get to that I'll set you on the ground here and you can watch me drop it down I sure made it easy the uh, the test pole works pretty well the, uh, the pole is about 19 feet long and then it's uh, it ends up being oh, about a foot off the ground there where up above the below the uh, hinge point all right let me show you the antenna we'll start over here I may need to take a tire out this is kind of high up in the air for me either swinging you around whipping you around I gotta set up on top of a, a few extra tires I have kicking around all right, we started out with uh, many of you that know me know I like to use plexiglass. This comes out of an old computer monitor, a, a flat screen monitor. They, some of the bigger, uh, good quality monitors, they have some thick plexiglass in it. Never mind my dirty nails, I just finished building this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you can see how thick that is. It's a, oh, probably a quarter inch, maybe a little more. I laid it out and marked out for all my holes. You can see my lines that are there. Even though these two were off. I don't know how that happened, but it did. I used uh, parts from a, a Mako M103 that I have. I did not modify the parts at all. So the M103 can go back together. So don't worry. Uh, oop, bumping you around. It's just the element is put together and the wire is clamped on the end. And I used the U-bolts that would have held this bracket to a, a boom pole. I used it to tie it into the, the mass pipe uh, through the plexiglass. So you can see on the underside, we got the U-bolts. So I'm not bending the plexiglass. When I tighten these up, it tightens to that flat clamp. And then I just drilled holes and used nuts and bolts to attach these brackets to the plexiglass. And I just cut a square piece of the plexiglass. That's, that stuff is easy to cut on a table saw. Uh, I just have a little table saw and it cuts that with no problem. I then clamped the coax. The coax is another story. We'll get to that in a minute. As you notice, there's some, some thin coax there. I just clamped it onto the ends of the antenna. And this is a, a full wave loop. So one end of the coax gets connected to one side, and then the shield gets connected to the other side. Now the reason for the thin coax is because this antenna, uh, the resistance is not right. It's not a 50 ohm antenna. So we need to make a matching network to get it to 50 ohms. And if we come down here, I know it's crude. This is not a permanent antenna, so don't pick on me for it. I have it just spliced together. I did solder it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The connections are soldered underneath that tape. So we have a 75 ohm coax here connecting to the antenna. And then that 75 ohm ties into a 50 ohm coax to head to the radio. This 75 ohm coax is 7 foot 4 inches long on my antenna. All right. Depending on where you tune your antenna, you may have to adjust that. Because the, the math for it, I'm not going to bore you with all the math. I'm just going to tell you what I put together. Uh, for channel 38, this needs to be 7 foot 4 inches long. Uh, it may need to be a, adjusted some because I have put a, an antenna analyzer on this. And my resistance is at about 43 ohms. Which is, I mean, it's lower than what it should be, but it's, it's in acceptable range. Uh, it'll, it'll work without damaging the radio. So we have that to get the resistance correct. 
and then to adjust the SWR if I needed to. I did not need to, but this right here, I could slip that in and out to adjust the SWR. I put it together according to my math and it worked out. Uh, like I said, the only thing I'm not real happy with is the, the resistance. Uh, but I know I could change that probably by getting better cable. Because uh, this cable is kind of cheap and it's not much to it. So I'm sure if I replace that, if I did a more permanent setup, I mean, I can't leave this the way it is anyway because we get copper touching aluminum. Uh, but again, this is just a temporary antenna. I just wanted to build one to see how well a full wave delta loop would work. Uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. All right, did we go over everything? Oh, no, actually, I did not. Uh, the length on this, uh, each of these aluminum sections is 12 foot, oh, wait a minute, let me check my notes. 12 foot three is the, the math that I came up with for channel 38. I mean, obviously it'll go 20 channels down, 20 channels up from 38. That's the area I use. So I tuned it to that. I did all my math for channel 38, which gave me 12 foot three for these, for the wire, and this so it's three sections of 12 foot three i used 12 gauge stranded copper wire and just clamped it to the end of the pipe again it's not a permanent setup so the copper against aluminum it's not going to affect me because this antenna is not going to be in the air long enough but we just want to see how good a delta loop works as you can see just just clamped on if it was going to be a permanent antenna, there's a lot of things I would change. But being that I'm only doing this for experimenting and to see how good a delta loop is, it doesn't have to be long lasting. All right, let's stand this thing back up. All right, let's check the SWR. Put that on calibrate. We're right on the set line. On channel one, we have, oh, right in between 1.3 and 1.4. Uh, closer to 1.3. So we got a 1.3 to one on channel one. Let's go to 40, go back to calibrate. Nope, still right on the money. Now we check SWR on 40. We have 1.2 on channel 40. Now let's go to some higher channels. I'll actually go back there. We'll try channel 62. Make sure we're still on the set line. We are. SWR on 62. 1.2. Let's try going even higher. Oh, how do I, I, I got to try to remember the switch positions. They, they, oh, no, wrong way. Not that one. How about that one? There we go. Up on channel 94 now. Let's just check calibration, which needs to be adjusted a little. And my hand being there is putting the focus out of whack. All right, channel 94, what's your guesses? Just under 1.3 to 1. So it can go from channel 1 all the way up <laughs> to the end of the band. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. It covers quite a quite an area. All right, let's uh let's use this thing a little. Ooh, I just kicked the tripod. Uh let me see if I can contact any of my locals just to get a a quick radio check on it. What kind of signals is sending your way? About the same. Nice, it's not even pointing at you either. I got it pointing uh, north and south right now. Yeah, it's a little over a seven. That's not bad considering I'm only hitting you with uh, 16 watts. All right, guys, there it is. Full wave delta loop. It works pretty good. I uh, talked a little bit of skip with it. Unfortunately, I didn't get that on camera. 
Uh, but I did talk to one of my locals, and he said it was doing pretty well. Uh, for a barefoot radio, he said it was hitting him about the same as what I usually hit him. And uh, it's not quite pointing at him. He's uh, southwest of me. And this is pointing uh, just slightly off south and just slightly off north. But it works pretty well. I'm happy with it. I'm going to be testing this one out for a couple of weeks. We'll see if we can get some, uh, some good skip with this. Uh, maybe we can reach uh, somebody up in England when they start coming in again. Uh, it'd be nice to reach all the way out there. All right, guys, until I do some skip videos, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.